Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so glad to be back with you today. And I know the title sounds like, what? Take those clothes off. They don't fit you. But trust me when I say there's a significant meaning to, um, to today's message. The Lord actually dropped this in my spirit uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I'm so excited to share uh, with you what I have on my spirit for today. So I just want to read the scripture, then I'll go to my intro, and then I'll say hello, and we'll get right into the message. So the scripture says, uh, Saul put his clothes on David. He put a bronze helmet on David's head and armor on his body. David put the sword and even tried put on the sword and even tried to walk around. He tried to wear Saul's uniform, but David was not used was not used to all those heavy things. David said to Saul, "I can't fight in these things. I'm not used to them." So David took them off. He took his walking stick and in his hand and picked up five smooth stones from the stream. He put those five stones in his shepherd's bag and held the sling in his hand. Then he went out to meet the Philistine. He went to go and fight Goliath. I can't wait to get into this message. I'll be right back right after this. I dedicate my business to the Lord for he has given me the power to produce wealth. Writing the vision and making it plain From pinching my pennies to making it rain Ugh. Birth and the vision ain't easy But one thing is true and for certain Committed my plans and ideas and my business my to my city God's God. I decree and declare that my business will serve the kingdom of God I have the heart of a farmer I sow seed and fertile ground for my business And reap harvest for the kingdom of God I will honor God and the laws of the land with my wealth I desire to do your will. I will walk in radical obedience. I will put all of my trust in you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I had to put on my glasses this morning because my eyes are very seasoned and sometimes they need a little help. <coughs> Hi, Hannah. How are you? Hello to everyone. Loretta. How, shout out to all Inner Circle members. I pray you guys are doing amazing. We have our, our monthly meeting this week, and I'm really, really, really excited about it. Um, Tracy, uh, Virginia, hello, Hannah, how are you? Hello, 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 everyone. Be sure to like and share this post. Um, this is the first time that I've done God work since before my live event. So if you haven't been able to tell, I've been on a little bit of a break um, from social media somewhat. You've seen me pop on there maybe once or twice, but not very much at all. Um, and it's because we've been working so hard on so many different things. Uh, one of those things I announced, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, which was the American Wig Association, which I'm very excited about. Let me take these off for a minute because the glare is distracting. Um, uh, we are working on, um, we did a soft launch for Ezra at the live event. So that is getting ready to be um, launched to the general public any day now. Um, and we're working on some other things. I want to tell you so bad, but I can't <laughs> tell you right now because I don't have dates. I don't like to announce something without a date or without a solid plan in hand. But uh, we've been working really, really. Thank you, Ruth. Hey, Ruth, we've been working a lot behind the scenes and I just needed um, that time away from social media to be able to focus on those 
those things. So um, I just felt led to come back a little bit early. It was supposed to be next week, but I felt led to come back a little bit early. And so here I am. Um, my voice sounds very raspy. Um, it sounds like this every year during football season for my son, because I am that parent that yells a lot not just for my kid, but for the entire team. So all football season, this is what you get, but it's all good. Uh, I'm really, really, really um, excited for everything that's going to happen for the rest of this year. So today, my, 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 my goodness, let me get into, uh, let me start today off with prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, so, so much for your mercy and grace and peace. Father, I thank you for who you are and for waking us up this morning and for clothing us and putting us in our right minds and for starting us on our way and for planting our feet on solid ground. And I just thank you, Father, for who you are, for everything that we have, even for the things that we don't have that you have wrapped up in gifts ready to give to us. I thank you, Father, for those things. I thank you for each and every individual that is on here today and that will watch the recording. Father, I thank you for, for bringing them here. And I thank you for uh, giving me this message to minister to your people. Father, I pray that you open up the eyes, the ears, the hearts, and the minds of each and every individual under the sound of my voice. I pray, Heavenly Father, that your will be done on this live right now and in the lives of those that are watching and listening. Father, I thank you. I love you and I honor you. And I invite you into my office. I invite you into this atmosphere to have your way. Have your way in me. Thank you, Father. There is no part of my life that you are not welcome. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. I see some more people just hopped in here. Uh, please like and share this video. Like and share this video. If you can hear me this morning, good morning. If you can hear me uh, clearly, please drop a one in the chat. Drop a one in the chat if you can hear me. If everything is rocking and rolling, good. Mm. I was trying to, um, oh, good. Okay, good, 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 good. Good. I was trying to drink coffee this morning to help bring my voice back, but I guess that's just not going to work. This is going to be what it is. So listen, um, have you ever befriended someone in your life that you just didn't feel comfortable with when you were around them. You thought, you know, oh, I like this individual. Um, they're a fun person to be around. And then you get around them and you hang around them and you're like, mm, this just doesn't feel right. Or maybe, maybe you have you ever found yourself in a situation where you felt completely out of place? Or maybe you've been in a situation before and you're like, what am I doing? What am I doing? Who is this person? Have you ever, just tell me yes in the chat or raise your hand in the chat. Have you ever in life, at any moment in your life, just stopped and said, what am I doing? How did I get here? Yes, 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 yes. So one of my favorite, I have a bunch of favorite stories in the Bible. I'm just going to stop saying one of my favorite and just, just say, <laughs> just tell the story. But one of my favorite stories in the Bible is the story of David and Goliath, but not for obvious reasons, not because little old David defeated big old giant Goliath, but because of David's heart, because of David's faithfulness in in the way God created him because of David's faithfulness in who God was. It was so, the story is so amazing. So I'm going to teach 
from that story this morning. But first, I want to talk about, I want to share a story, a short story with you about how, mm, about how God equips us. So very, this was years ago, like over 10 years ago, I attended an event. It was an event it was an event uh, about speaking. It was a speaking event. And I remember being so hungry to learn how to effectively communicate my message that I was so attentive. I was like a sponge. I could literally see an image of me sitting in this room and I was like a sponge. And as the, the speaker slash teacher is teaching, I am soaking it all in and I'm literally soaking it in and I'm like, okay, all right, that, okay. I'm writing everything down and I'm taking notes and I'm absorbing everything. And so I go through this teaching and I go through this training and I immediately flip on a switch. And that switch is I have to do all of these things in order for me to communicate effectively. Now, some of the things that I'm learning while I'm sitting in this event is not sounding all the way like it meshes with how I roll, but I'm going to do it because I want to be effective and I feel like this is the way for me to be effective. And so there were little tidbits of information that, um, that was shared that just didn't really sit right with me, but I'm going to try this because I was told that this works. And so it would be little things like don't mention, don't mention God or don't, don't uh, do this or make sure you don't, don't teach all the things, only hold back this much so that you only teach this much so that they are hungry for more. It was all these little tactics and strategies. And I'm, as I'm sitting there and I'm getting ready to deliver uh, my first speech, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like me. It doesn't feel like what I'm supposed to be doing. It feels different. It didn't feel comfortable. I felt very uncomfortable in this space. So I go and I'm getting ready to go and deliver my first talk. And as I'm standing there, everything shifts in a moment. And I go back to what I really didn't know that I knew, but I knew. And it was just like David and Saul, when Saul tries to put his armor on David and David, he tries it and he's like, mm -mm, this doesn't feel right. These clothes don't feel good. I have to take them off and wear, do my own thing. So I want to paint a picture for you from the scene that's about to unfold in this David and Goliath story. So by this point, chapter, this comes from first, first Samuel uh, chapter 17. The entire chapter 17 is about David and Goliath. In chapter 16, it starts off with, God telling um, Samuel, listen, I don't know why you're sitting there still mourning for Saul. He's been rejected because he's hard headed. He's not doing what I told him to do. So go get your oil, go into this city and I need you to anoint the next king. Well, the next king was David. So by this point in the story, David had already been anointed king, but he hasn't, he hadn't taken his position yet. And so in chapter 17, it starts off by them talking about uh, being in the field and they describe Goliath and all of these things. And David, who is the son of Jesse, is uh, has been instructed to go and take bread and cheeses into, it was supposed to be to the commander of Saul's army where his brothers were at. So he's obedient and he goes and he does this. Um, and he takes the he takes the journey. It was kind of a long journey, but he takes the journey to go from where he was at 
onto the mountain where they were about to fight the Philistines. Now, the Philistines are on one side of the mountain and, and they're at the top and the Israelites were on the other side of the mountain at the top and they're both just there. Um, obviously, far close enough to where they can see see them and hear what is happening when they're calling, when, when uh, Goliath starts to <laughs> um, aggravate them or say whatever he's going to say to intimidate them. So David shows up, he brings the, the bread and the cheese and he's talking to his brothers. And as he's doing this, Goliath is every day, he used to, to say things to intimidate the Israelites and they were scared of him. So he begins to speak the same words that he's been speaking to intimidate them. And the men are afraid of him. So while David is there and he's fellowshipping and he's talking with his brothers and he's talking with them, they tell David, they're like, have you seen this? Have you seen this man? Have you heard about him? Uh, he, he, he's always saying these things. And I mean, he's really big. And, and King Saul says, any man who defeats him, he will be rewarded with riches. He's going to give his hand to the, the daughter. The daughter can marry whoever does this. And, you know, he'll get some other things. He'll be free. His house will be free. And David's like, what? And so he asked them again. He asked them a second time. And they said, they say to him, any man who defeats him, they repeat what they, they repeat what they said. You'll get riches. You'll be able to marry the king's daughter and all of these things. So David is like, he says this in verse 26. He said, and he, he hears what, what Goliath is saying. And he says, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? My God, that's so powerful. That is so powerful. Think about that statement for a moment. David is standing there and he hears this intimidation coming from across the way from this man. And he's standing there amongst all these people, all these soldiers who have been here for a while, intimidated and afraid of this man. And here you have little old David that says, who is this? Who is this dude? Who is this that he thinks he should defy the armies of the living God? See, David already knew. David already knew that you can't defeat the armies of the living God, but they didn't know. They didn't have the same type of faith that David had. So David said, you know what? I'll fight him. I'll fight him. They looked at David and they were like, man, you can't go. The, 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 his brothers got annoyed with him. King Saul was like, you are too small. You, you can't, that, that man is big. You can't go over there. You're too small. You're too young. You, you, you're not ready. They told him, they said, listen, this man is a champion fighter. He has been fighting since he was yay small. He has been trained for this. He has been equipped for battle. He was born for it. He was already ready before he's, he's done this. He can run circles around you. You can't go up there and fight that man. You can't do that. You're not big enough. You're not equipped. Now pause for a moment. How many times have you in your life? Now, I don't know. Maybe you've never experienced this, but how many times in your life have you come up to a situation that is so intimidating and you feel like this thing is so big and so bad and it's and it's and it, it it's there it's substantial it's this big mountain it's this big behemoth of a thing that i can't do anything about and then what makes matters worse is that you're already defeated in your mind to be already defeated in your mind. Let's say you have somebody else in your life that knows about this thing that you are in the middle of experiencing. And as you are going through whatever it is you're going through in this thing, they layer on top of the girl. I know, mm, I know, 
I don't know. I don't know how those bills are going to get passed. I don't know how you do it. I don't know. I wouldn't be able to do that. I would just try something else. I would just give up. I would just go do this. I would just go. Mm -mm. You're not ready because see, if you were ready, then you would have this, 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 and this in place. How many times have you had situations in your life that the mountain, the Goliath feels so big, it feels so much more substantial than how you feel? Did you react like David or did you react like the other Israelites where they're like, man, I don't, mm -mm. I'm just not ready. I'm not ready. I don't think... It, I'm not equipped. What she said is right. What she what she said is is exactly right. I don't. I'm not really ready, and I don't really know. So maybe I should just walk away. Maybe I should just accept defeat. But don't you know we serve a God that does not lose a battle. He doesn't lose. He does not lose. He has never lost a battle. So that statement in verse 26, when, when David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he, that he thinks he should, doesn't say think in scripture, it says that he should defy the armies of the living God. But David is saying, how dare you think that you're going to come against my God, a God that has never lost a battle. See, we got to have the kind of faith like David had. It was, he was so sure. He was so sure that he says, you know what? I'll fight him. They said he was too small. He didn't care. Now I want you to think about this. The scripture says Goliath was six cubits and a span. Six cubits and a span is over nine feet tall. Nine feet. Saul, who was the king, my God, when Saul was anointed king, it says in chapter 10, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 23, talks about how tall Saul was. He was taller than everybody else. So it made sense that he would be the one to defend his people because he, he didn't match Goliath in stature, but he was way taller than everybody else, especially David. So it made sense that he would be the one to go and defeat Goliath. But Saul didn't have that kind of faith. Yes, he was king. Yes, he was chosen to defeat. Yes, he was chosen as king. And yes, they were there to defeat the Philistines. But he didn't have the faith. He lacked faith. And of course, he did some other things that he wasn't supposed to do. So by this point, he had been rejected. And you have this little man David was not, it does not say David was tall. It says he was handsome, but it doesn't say he was tall. He was young at this point in his life. And he was much smaller than a nine. He was over, over nine feet tall. And he says, I'll fight him. And then you have the king who should be fighting this battle. That's like, uh, you can't go. I'm not going. You can't go. You're way smaller than me. You can't do this. Goliath's helmet. He had a helmet of bronze. Can you imagine how heavy that was? A coat of mail. It's like the, the thing that he wears, almost like the, a breastplate. It's like a, a, almost like a jacket. That alone was 78 pounds. <laughs> his boots were brass. The staff of his, his spear, his javelin, was 15 pounds alone. And he's standing there. 
shield in hand. He's standing there with his armor on over nine feet tall with all of this equipment on. He's been trained for battle since he was a little boy. You know he's killed people. You know he probably has won almost every battle that he has ever entered. And then you have David. Who says, I'll fight him. Do you know what type of confidence you have to have in God and in the way God equipped you for you to stand there with something like that in front of you without being intimidated and saying, I got this. I'm not worried about this. I'll do it. Y'all won't do it. I'll do it. So after they tell David that he's not equipped to go into battle, he puts them in their place. He checks them. He says, I kept sheep for my father and I had to fight a lion and a bear that took a lamb from the flock. I went and struck him and delivered the lion. I mean, the, uh, the lamb out of the mouth. And then I killed him. I've killed lions and bears. Goliath can get it too. And so he stands there and he says all of this with so much confidence and so much faith and so much belief in himself that King Saul was like, okay, David was already equipped. He was ready. Woo, Jesus. He was ready already. He was ready even after, I don't, I don't know what happened between the time that, that David was equipped and, and the time that, I don't know how much time that was between those two chapters, but here's what I do know. Do you know how much humility it takes to be anointed to be king and not take your position immediately? See, most people out of pride would have been fighting to get to the top immediately. But there was something about David. Even as Samuel went in to go find David, who was the youngest, see, there were three, he had three brothers. He had three brothers that were older than him. David was the youngest. And it says in scripture, it says um, that God looked at the heart, not the stature of man. He looks at our heart. And see, David was humble enough to allow this equipping to take place. He was obedient to his earthly father and whatever he told him to do, he was herding sheep. That's not a glorious job. That's not something that's as, 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 as that's not a sexy job. He was herding sheep, but he did it with pride. You can tell he did it with pride just by, by the way he shared that story. He, he locked in to what God was doing in his life. And as he says this to them, Think about the significance of this. He defeated lions and bears or a lion and a bear. But he knew it wasn't just him. He knew. He knew it had to be God. And that built his faith. It built his confidence and that is how David, even though it says that David was small in stature, naturally he was small, right? Naturally he was shorter, but spiritually he was taller than Goliath. He was bigger. He was more well-equipped. He didn't, he didn't have, he didn't need all of those things that Goliath had. So as he says this to them, he's like, look, 
I've killed lions and bears. I took the lamb out of the mouth of one of these animals and then I killed him. Goliath could get it too. So Saul's like, okay, let's do this then. You, you go. So King Saul tries to put his armor on David because he feels like, you know, it's only, it's only fair <laughs> that you fight heavy infantry with heavy infantry. So it's only fair that you, you go there and you're equal in, 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 in the earthly sense. So he's putting this stuff on and, you know, the, 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 the ancient Hebrews, they were very attentive to the safety of their people. So this was not an abnormal thing for them to wear armor. They always wore armor for protection for obvious reasons. And so he's putting on the helmet and he's putting on the coat of arms and, uh, and he's putting on all of this equipment and David is putting it on and he takes the sword and he's moving around and he's like, mm, no. This don't feel right. This doesn't feel right. I haven't tested it. So I need to just, I, I got to take this off. And can you imagine, think about this scene. He's got this armor on and he's looking like he's ready for battle now because he looks the part. Who? Mm, he looks the part. You don't have to look the part to do what God called you to do. Hmm. So he looks the part and he's like, no, this doesn't feel right. This doesn't feel right. I haven't tested it. So he takes it off. He picked up his staff and five smooth stones. And he picked up his sling because that is what he knew. That is how God equipped him. I recorded a video, gosh, probably a few months ago, about how God equips us and understanding that he does not gift us with something and equip us to do it for it not to be successful. So you don't have to conform to ways that other things were done just because it has always been done that way. You don't fit in a box. You don't belong in a box. So stop putting yourself in a box. You don't have to preach like they preach. You don't have to pray like they pray. You don't have to do that technique the way they did that technique. God created all of us different for a reason. There are people who are assigned and inclined to hear your voice, to buy from you, to learn from you that don't connect with everybody else. There are people who are repulsed by my voice and that's okay. We're all created different for a reason. And when we understand that God has equipped us for our own specific reason, we have our own staff, our own five smooth stones, and our own sling that we've been equipped, equipped with to carry out the assignment that's on our lives. And sometimes, the Lord will put people in your path to help give you one of the things and equip you with what you need. And sometimes we take on characteristics from people that God didn't send. And instead of saying, this doesn't really fit, we wear it anyway. We wear those clothes anyway. And we don't try to take them off for whatever reason. We just want to wear them because they said we should wear them and they're doing what we want to do. So we, we're going to wear these clothes and we're not going to, mm -mm, 
I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to put, keep their clothes on because this worked for them. That's not how God equipped you. And that's not the person that God sent to sow into your life. And sometimes we get so jaded by the thing that's in front of us. We get so jaded by success. We get so jaded by what we see, uh, like the, the, the belts, the cars, the shoes, the, the, the whatever it is. We get so jaded by those things that we lose sight of the person that God sent to help us get to where we're going. And we follow things and not anointing. So David puts on these clothes. He says they don't fit. He picks up the things that, that he was equipped to use. He gets ready. And he walks over there with his staff, his stones in his little satchel thing, and his sling. He walks up to this nine foot tall giant. And the Bible says in verse 42 that, that David was short, basically short, ruddy, and handsome in appearance. So he's he's handsome, but that doesn't mean anything to Goliath. And verses 43 through 47 read. And the Philistines said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Then David said, first of all, let me pause there. He cursed him. So David is standing there. Short little old David is looking up to Goliath and he's listening to what he's saying that he cursed them. He said, come to me, I'll give your flesh to the birds and to the beasts of the field. How terrifying should that, or <laughs> should that have been to stand there and hear that? But David's response in verse 45 says, then David said to the Philistine, Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. See, the difference here is that Goliath is saying what he's going to do. David is saying what God is going to do through him. My God. David said to the first time, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you down and cut off your head and I will give the dead bodies of your, the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all his assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. My God. And we all know how the story ends exactly as he prophesied to Goliath. He cut off his head. He brought it back. He defeated Goliath. He defeated Goliath. Little old David, ruddy, handsome in appearance, stood in front of this over nine foot tall giant that was intimidating Saul's army, the Israelites. They were scared of him. And David said, I'll do it. Saul said, take my clothes. David said, these don't fit. God already equipped me to do this. 
I'm going to walk in authority. You got to own who you are and how God has equipped you because he equipped you in a specific way for a specific purpose. Stop trying to fit in other people's clothes. Stop trying to fit in what other people are doing. You were not created that way. Own who you are. Don't try to put yourself in a box because you feel like you have to fit in. Those clothes don't fit you. God made you different for a reason. Walk in it and own it because there are people who are connected to you because of who you are. Stand on what you've already been equipped to stand in. You don't need their clothes. David had five smooth stones. One of them, uh, he took the slingshot and he shot phew, right here in the center of Goliath's forehead. There were five smooth stones. I'm going to give you five key things that you can stand in and stand on with the clothes and the equipping that the Lord gave you. The first one is boldness. David was bold. He was bold. He was the one that said, "How? who is this man saying this to the armies of the living God? He was also bold when he said, this doesn't fit. Nope. Most people would have been like, well, you know, the king told me I had to wear it and he is the king. So um, I'm going to just put on what the king says to wear because he's the king and I should. Uh. David was like, no, this does not fit. And the ultimate boldness was when he walked up there, he actually followed through with it. But after Goliath said what he was going to say, then David spoke with authority, which is the second thing. So he was bold and he had authority. And he stood there and he said what he said back. He told him everything that God was going to do through him. And it happened. So boldness, authority, prayer. You gain confidence and boldness and authority and revelation through prayer. People don't understand the importance of prayer. Prayer is always the thing that's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's the least attended event in the church. It's the thing that people do the least. But we are prayer. And it doesn't always have to be, oh, Father God, thank you. It doesn't always have to be that. Prayer is just conversation with God. Prayer is an appointed, it, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of different things. But prayer can also be an appointment that you set with God to speak to him, to converse with him in your whatever study, if that's in the morning, if that's at night, if it's in the evening, if it's in the middle of the day on your lunch break, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be, don't be religious about it. But we have to, that's how we commune with God. That's how we communicate with the Lord is in prayer. So boldness, prayer, authority, the word of God. The word of the God, the word of God is the sword of the spirit in the, in the book of Ephesians. When it talks about the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the, the belt of truth, the sword of the living word. If we don't get the word in us, how can we pour out? God can't pull out of you what you don't put in. 
I mean, he can do anything. But you got to, the word says, faith comes by hearing. So when you read the word of God, read it out loud so that you can hear it. Prayer, hearing, build your faith. And the last one is faith. I talk about faith so much because it is such, first of all, being an entrepreneur, period, requires faith like you have never (laughs) experienced in your life. It requires faith. See the difference between David and a lot of a lot of us is David, I believe David had so much faith and confidence and boldness and authority in his ability because of his relationship with God. You don't get that much confidence. You don't get to that point where you're standing in front of a, a nine foot giant and you're, he was probably what, I don't know, five, 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 eight. I don't know how tall David was, but he wasn't nine feet tall. And he stood there just like he was just as tall as Goliath, if not taller with confidence and boldness. He had faith in his equipping. He had faith in God. He had faith in God's ability to work through him. He had faith. He knew. He didn't think. He knew. He knew. So boldness, prayer, authority, the word of God, and faith. You can do anything with God. He has already equipped you. You're already ready. You don't need to put on anybody else's clothes to fulfill the call that is on your life, whatever it is, whatever it is. Put on, pick up your stones your staff, put your stones in your bag and pick up your slingshot and walk in authority. You're already ready and you're already equipped. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your mercy and your grace and your peace. Father, I thank you for each and every individual under the sound of my voice right now. Father, I pray for those individuals that felt like that felt like they had to conform. They felt like they had to do things this way because this is this is the way they said that I have to do it and and they 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 walked away or turned their eyes away from what and what you train them to do and how you train them to do it. So if that was you, lift up your hands right now and repent and say, you know what, Lord, I repent. I repent for trying to do things their way. And I surrender to your will and to what you have equipped me to do, Lord. I will trust you and I will obey. And never again will I try to conform to man's way of doing things when you have already given me the ability to walk in authority in the way that you told me to do it. And I know, Lord, that that may not be easy, that that may ruffle some feathers, that people may speak out against me, that people might call me crazy, that people might say, I don't know what I'm doing, that people might say, that's wrong. I know those things may happen, Lord. But I don't care about what man says about what I'm doing. I only care what you say, Lord. Because you have equipped me or you're equipping me. 
and I'm ready. I'm ready to obey. I'm ready to be obedient. So use me, Lord, in any capacity that you need to use me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't even know how long I've been live this morning, but um, I'm going to go through some of these comments. If you have a prayer request, I'm going to try to get to your prayer request. I know that it's been a while <laughs> since I've been live. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get uh, to some of these prayer requests. Woo, amen. <clears throat> oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, he did. Virginia, David did. Virginia says, David said the armor is not proven. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Arisha. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Vernell says, David was equipped. David said, when I walked through, because God, be, when I walked through, because he had that God for dance walking on faith. I'm sure we're on the same page. <laughs> it was a little hard for me to navigate through, but I'm sure we're on the same page. <laughs> Felicia says, the way you be having us well-equipped, reading fully booked again. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes, Goliath could get it too. Listen, he was not scared. Yes, Felicia, we're all different for a reason. For a reason. Mm. Yes, amen. Constance says, yes, amen. Somebody else is, somebody else is identity. Amen. 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 Hey, Melissa, how are you? Uh, 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 let's see. Constance says, hello, you are talking to me this morning. Thank you. This is for me today uh, on and at the right time. Amen. Praise God. My God, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. Yes, he is. You were born, Vernell says, you were born to stand out, not fit in. Stay in your way until God says move. Hello. Yes, yes, yes. Ranisha says, those clothes don't fit you. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Pamela says, this is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your revelation through this. Oh, thank you so much. Amen. Felicia says, I had to pray to cast the devil off me to walk in authority. I am equipped in my own anointing. Amen. Trust in God's way for me. Amen. Amen. I miss you too. Hi, Miss Clausen. How are you? How are you? Felicia says, please pray that God is blessing, God blessing on my finances. I'm guessing that's how you mean it. And gets me a good paying job. I need a miracle. I need a breakthrough. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just lift up uh, Felicia to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, you already know what she needs. You know uh, what she needs in this season of her life. Uh, concerning finances and concerning a job uh, and concerning whatever it is uh, that she has prayed and asked you for. Because Felicia, Felisa, Felisa, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, you put those two things on here, but you've asked God for more and he's heard you and he hears your heart. Um, and so father, I just pray that your will be done over her life, that you open up doors that were closed to her before and that you uh, plant her feet on solid ground, that there be a solid foundation 
for her to stand on and build wealth for, for her, her family, and future generations. I pray for a fresh anointing over her life right now, Lord. I pray that there be a divine shift in the atmosphere, that after this moment, that after um, Felicia, just lift up your hands and surrender. Yeah, after this moment, that after, um, mm, my goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I don't know if you're doing this right now or um, if you will do this or you've done it before, but I just see you um, with your hands lifted and and you're just rocking back and forth and you're you're crying. But the cry is a release of all of the pent up um, anxiety. It's a release. It's, it, the cry is the deliverance. So cry out, like physically cry. I don't know if you've done it already or if you're going to do it or if you're doing it now, <clears throat> but cry, cry out because as you cry and as you release, everything is coming off of you. It's like it's, it's, it's a purge that's taking place or purge that has taken place. And after you come out of this purge, you're gonna walk in such authority. You're gonna walk and it doesn't matter what, I just hear that scripture that says, and when it says, uh, and it won't come near thy dwelling, it doesn't matter what happens around you, it will not affect you because you will be standing firm in authority and on the word of God and knowing that he is with you. And remember, remember how David stood there in authority and David knew that he served a God that never lost a battle. You're not going to lose. You're going to walk forward in the anointing and in the call that is on your life. Stand in it, stand on it, and know that it is already done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You're welcome, Roxanne. Roxanne says, thank you for the, your positivity and mentorship, working on my dream and God's path. Amen. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Jasmine says, a beautiful word that was on time. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Crying cleanses the soul. So good, come in your heart. So God can come in your heart, amen. You are so welcome. You are so, so welcome. All right, guys, I'm gonna sign off this morning and go and try to rest my voice. <laughs> I'm gonna try to rest my voice. Um, but I just wanna say thank you so much for tuning in this morning. I'll be back next Monday. Uh, for another God Works episode. And Marquetta Breslin Live will return next Tuesday. So I'll be live on Monday and Tuesday of next week. And I will resume my normal um, schedule from next week on out. Um, but I just thank each and every one of you for tuning in. God bless you. I pray that you have a prosperous and healthy and amazing week. Remember, stand on those things. Stand on those things. You're welcome, Hannah. You're welcome. God bless you. God bless you all. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.